Right. Yeah, can't steal it. Woo. We are dealing the cream of the crop. Nobody does it better. I got 141 and two thirds chance of winning. But brother, I am bad, and they know I'm bad. I'm the man in the hour, the man with the power. You sweet to be sour. This is gonna be a slapping offer. Welcome to the Grill Out. From the heart of Shillian, West Virginia, here's your host, Hollywood, Jeff Petty. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to the Grill Out, episode 27. I am your host, Hollywood Jeff Petty, trailer park Jeff Petty. I am J-E-F-F-P-E-T-T-Y, which is what I started doing last week, because for some reason I wanted to be Jeff Jarrett. Anywho. You're not Jeff Jarrett. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not Double J. I don't have. It doesn't have the same ring that Jeff Jarrett does. Yeah, yeah. It is what it is. And that voice that you're hearing, yeah. other than mine, <laughs> is my one of my illustrious co-hosts, Josh Cole. Bye bye. I'm back. <laughs> he is back. <laughs> I don't have a scheduling conflict this week. And 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 for those of you that are like wondering, like, oh, what was what was Jeff's actual scheduling conflict? Yeah. Okay, I, I wanted to watch the Daytona 500. All right, I you just wanted, wanted to, to watch cars guys go fast. Yeah, I wanted to see cars go fast. I wanted to see them go left. And uh, <laughs> I, I enjoyed the rocks, um, the, the the rock given the the command, the drivers start your engine, especially after the rain delay. And the first <laughs> thing that comes out of his mouth is finally. Mm. The Rock can say, and then he says it. And I was like, okay, that's a nice little tongue-in-cheek Did thing. he make any references to WWE or anything? No, but it was hilarious. My brother and I were sitting there watching it. and Well, both of my brothers, all three of us are sitting there watching it, um, including myself. I don't have th- I have two brothers. <laughs> well, I do have, a, I, I do have a, a half-brother that I've never met, but we mm. won't go down that road, um, in case you were listening. But, <laughs> no, we're sitting there listening to it, and they're like saying all the stuff that The Rock is. And immediately Jordan's like, they didn't call it, they didn't say nothing about being a wrestler. Huh. And they didn't. They didn't say anything about it. Wow. So I uh, yeah. The thing that kick started his career. Come yeah, on now. Yeah, yeah. You would you would think that they would kind of lead in with that. It's kind of like a big thing with it too now too. <laughs> yeah, and that's kind of how, you know, most people know who you are anyways. Yeah. Not because of your action movies, <laughs> like they know you as the wrestler first. Some people know you as the as the action movie star first and yeah. then the wrestler, but just depends on when you were introduced yeah. to The Rock. Anywho, speaking of WrestleMania, The Rock, and all of that, Cody did call The Rock out Yeah, at Elimination Chamber. We'll get yeah. more into the Elimination Chamber later, but he did call out Rock and said anytime, anyplace. So we'll see what happens there. Maybe Rock will end up just slapping Cody again. Yep. So, And also talking about WrestleMania, this is a press release, okay, we all know about fan access. Some people listening to this probably have attended fan access, but I wanted to. Yeah, it always seems like a good, like a cool experience, especially yeah. as a wrestling fan. They technically haven't had it since before thirty six because of COVID. Yeah, and they kind of half brought it back with like a superstore, but they haven't had the full experience back yet until what we're about to talk about. Yeah, actually, the um, um who was it? Uh, I was reading somebody that did mention that it was brought back and it was the Superstore, mm-hmm. which I guess merch. You know, yeah. You got to get those gimmick tables out <laughs> there. But this is a little snippet from the press release. WWE World, which is what it's going to be called, World at WrestleMania. So it's WWE World at WrestleMania. will feature a variety of immersive experiences for fans, including a central main stage that will host roundtable discussions with top WWE stars, a WWE 2K24 gaming tournament, live podcast recordings, book us. That's not in the that's not in the press release. I'm just just book us. Any book us trips? Yes, please. Live memorabilia and autograph sales through Fanatics Live at the largest WWE superstore in WrestleMania history. The event will also feature exclusive merchandise, autograph sessions, and a meet and greets with WWE superstars and legends in addition to immersive exhibits and memorabilia honoring WrestleMania's 40-year history, and Fanatics will be putting on the event. Yeah. So I guess that's just that's going to be for the entire week at um, WrestleMania? About, start about, I think, Wednesday, or Wednesday or Thursday, and then go on to the Monday. Okay, so the Monday after WrestleMania yeah. will go. Okay. 
Yeah, because you got the Raw after Mania mm-hmm. and, and all of that. So if you do have plans to go to Philadelphia for WrestleMania 40, definitely stop by there. Well, you have to get tickets for it, too. Oh, you do? Uh-huh. Okay, well, you know... If I mean, you, there might be a big package deal, but I don't know. But I do know there are separate tickets. For yeah, there, I, I would be... I, I would honestly be shocked if there wasn't, if it yeah. wasn't included in some type of package yeah. somewhere. <laughs> so, you know, it, it is what it is. But hey, if you if you are listening to this and you have a chance to go, let us know. Send pictures. Let us know what your experience was. Yeah. And we'll, you know, read it off here on the air, whether it's on 1490 AM where you're listening to this or the podcast. And speaking of immersive exhibits, if you happen to go to Saudi Arabia, tell us how that one is. <laughs> exactly. If <laughs> It looks really cool. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. If we're uh, if we're going to believe all of the um, nice things that they have posted on there, we'll just say <laughs> that. I won't say exactly what I want to say because I am a professional. Yeah. And speaking of WWE, Gunther, his title reign, his IC title reign, passes Pedro Morales for total. For total, total altogether. So this is coming from Fightful dot com. WWE recognizes Gunther as holding the WWE Intercontinental Championship for 618 days. That this, was of last Monday. Yes. Uh, I, well, there, he's 620-something now. Yeah. Um, this makes him the longest reigning WWE Intercontinental Champion when totaling combined days for those who have had multiple runs with the title. Pedro Morales, who held the title twice, is recognized as holding the belt for a combined 617 days. His first reign lasted 193 days, and his second reign lasted 424 days, according to WWE. So, so a little bit of a that. I was gonna say, I'll, I'll toss this over to you, the <laughs> belt collector, our belt collector, our yeah. belt expert on this program. It's a little bit of expertise, as, as you notice, they say according to WWE. If you go by that, that's because you know WWE does tape dates and whatever. Mm-hmm. The actual days that Pedro held were 619. So. Gunther tied that 619 on Monday and then broke it at that Tuesday. So. Okay. Yeah, because, uh, like, reading further into the article, like, mm-hmm. it was breaking down other stuff. It did mention that, the yeah. 619. And Gunther, he's on, like, 620-something now. Yeah. Um, But it mentioned Chris Jericho's. Yeah. Like, his nine reigns. It totaled out to, like, 330-some days. <laughs> like, it really wasn't. It was, like, half of what Gunther has. Yeah. It's kind of like The Rock. He has... Eight world title reigns, but all of them are really short. Yeah, it, it's that attitude era hot mm-hmm. potato booking of, you know, hey, we need a title change over here. Hey, <laughs> we need a title change over here. Hey, we need a title change over here. You know, just to pop that rating a little bit. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, that's uh, Gunther. We we have we've kind of been talking about that on and off through this program since we started doing the podcast. Um, but yeah, we, you know, he is now a combined and overall he is the longest reigning IC champion and in that's the history. In a single reign. Yeah, that's in one <laughs> single reign. I really want to see like I really wanted to see Gunter go to WrestleMania and face Seth Rollins and you know, he's not facing Seth Rollins now, we know this. I don't know if you have it later. There was an original plan for him, but that's been scrapped. The, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they the kind of they had to apparently also speaking of like Seth Rollins and scrapped plans, Bronson Reed was supposed mm. to take on Seth Rollins at Elimination Chamber, but mm. he got injured. Yeah. He's not medically cleared, so they had to scrap those plans. Yeah. So that that would have been an interesting match. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Anywho, switching gears from WWE over to everybody's favorite botched promotion at the moment, <laughs> TNA. So as to what we've talked about on the program, TNA has, I mean... They had a lot of momentum going into 2024, okay? And a lot of that is credited to the former president of TNA, Scott Demore, who is, you know, a former member of Team Team Canada and was one of the TNA originals in a way. Well, he was released. He was fired by Anthem, who owns... Fired. Yeah. They, they canned him. <laughs> he was fired by Anthem, who owns TNA, okay? And the locker room... We're not fans of that. Duh. Like, so much so that apparently, like, they had it on one Zoom session, Zoom conference with everybody, but then I guess they had to do another Zoom session to kind of, and have executives come in to try to calm everybody down. Yeah. And I noticed on Twitter, and I, I'm not the only one that noticed it, <laughs> everybody, a bunch of them, Jordan Gray's, uh, Josh Alexander, Tommy Dreamer, of yeah. all people, among others, were putting these hourglass emojis Kind of mm-hmm. saying TikTok, just waiting for their 
contracts yeah. to that or waiting for TNA just to fall apart. <laughs> I, I, I think we're already there. Yeah. And one comment I will give this. I'm, I'm not. This ain't gonna be an actual like segment. But comment of the week on the internet is somebody going TNA botching a resurgence for TNA is the most TNA thing I have ever seen. Yeah. Pretty much. Just like what well, just like <laughs> what I said a few weeks ago, TNA is going to TNA. Yeah. We should have known. We should have known. I had too much faith. Yeah. But so Josh Alexander, okay, he was one of them that put the little the little uh, uh, hourglass thing on his on his uh, Twitter account, along with some others, kind of you know signifying, hey, I'm just waiting for my stuff to to expire, which his was supposed to expire on February 14th. His contract with TNA. He had the option to have his contract extended. They He did not want them to extend his contract because, quote, he wanted to survey the landscape if possible. Okay, and I'll go ahead and read this. This is coming from cultaholic.com. Um, quote, Alexander's contract was set to expire on February 14th, but TNA picked up an option year, keeping the former world champion with the promotion until February 14th, 2025. Later on in the article, it states, Fightful's report suggesting that prior to TNA TNA exercising the option year Ale, option year Alexander himself asked for the option year to not be enacted by TNA as he wanted to quote survey the landscape if possible. So sounded like to me he wanted to kind of just see what his options were. Yeah. You know, maybe he didn't really say that he was wanting to leave. He probably was. Uh, probably, <laughs> probably after that he. Yeah. He wanted, he sounded like he just wanted to see what, you know, what was out there. Maybe he wanted to leave. Maybe he didn't. We, didn't, we don't got full confirmation on that. There is a <laughs> strong possibility, but there's also a possibility he's like, hey, I just, I just want to see what I got. And instead of like respecting that and being like, hey, you know, we understand and maybe going for, a, for you know, a, a show by show deal until they're able to have a full-on contract with him, they're like, nah, uh-uh. you're going to stay for another 365 days. Apparently, they didn't even, like, tell him. They just did it. Yeah. Like, like it's it's in their right to extend it, but they could have at least told him and, you know, kept some kind of good grace there. Yeah, you would think so. Like, you know, you've already made the locker room yeah. mad. <laughs> like, obviously, you've yeah. already... You, and, and you haven't just ticked off... Josh Alexander, who is a who is an integral part of your main event scene, you have ticked off a lot of people backstage. Yeah. I mean, you, it seems like you made Tommy Dreamer mad. Yeah, like Tommy Dreamer. I you know I, I thought he would stay around, but anywho, yeah, I, I think that as far as TNA management, as far well not management, but as far as Anthem goes, they are really fumbling the ball yeah. on all of this now. They just had uh, their No Surrender pay-per-view this past Friday. And before the show started, Eric Young came out with everybody on stage, and he was talking about how, you know, the the, re- the, the revamp of TNA and all that, and how it was sort of a grief, you know, feeling that they were going through. But he said he wanted, and I can't fully say the quote because it involves an mm-hmm. expletive, but he said he wanted to make it crystal clear to everybody that TNA will be moving forward. So maybe they were doing that as a sign of solidarity, who knows if all of them are in on it, or maybe it was just, you know, management and be like, hey, let's just go ahead and do this for perception reasons. We don't know. Not going to say yay nor nay on that. But that's that. That's how I perceived it as, hey, we're, we're just going to show that things are going to be okay. But we'll, we'll see. So, yeah. um, And also speaking of, just real quick, speaking of that uh, pay-per-view, I'm jumping around a little bit in the, in the uh, script. Uh, Mustafa Ali wins the X Division title from Chris Sabin, and it is his first major singles title win uh, for him in his career. Huh. Like he's he's had other single title win, wins and yeah. like smaller promotions, but as far as big promotions like nationwide promotions, this is this is his first one, first yeah. singles title. So just throwing that out there. Hmm. But also because it's just been a lot going on this weekend for TNA. This is coming from PW Insider. Um, quote, there will be a talent meeting this Saturday, which was yesterday. We don't know what, what the talent meeting was about. We may not know for a few days um, prior to the TV taping in New Orleans. Um, PW Insider has confirmed that um, there are some in the company who believe Anthem head Lynn Asper will be at the meeting. Um, in a leaked letter from members of the TNA roster, it was asked 
that Anthem meet with Scott Demore in an attempt to rectify the issues between the two sides. It does not appear there will be any meeting with Demore. Instead, Anthem will meet with Talent on Saturday. Hmm. So it seems like that they're going to they're doubling down on their firing of Scott Demore, and they're they're not going to budge. They don't want to budge. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, I don't. I, they're really they are really dropping the ball on this. Yeah. Like. Out of all, and I'm excluding WWE because they're just such a huge conglomerate. Going into 2024, they had the most momentum. Yeah, of all of, of all promotions under WWE, they were they if they played their cards right and they had all the cards in their hand, they could have easily taken over as the number two, yeah. the number two promotion in the country, which at the moment is AEW. Yeah, um, even though they sort of are on the upswing right now, TNA had way more momentum going for them. So it does. It seems like Anthem is just going to double down on everything. Um, talent obviously wants Scott Demore there, um, which rightfully so. Yeah. You know, he's a former wrestler. He is a former, you know, he's a former TNA original. Um, he, you know, is the face of this rebranding. You know, was, <laughs> was yeah, was the re, was the face of this rebranding. So, you know. I, I don't know why. Like, apparently, allegedly, it's because of co- cost measures, which is why they did it. Which again doesn't make any sense. Like, I understand. Like, it, it, what it seems like to me, and this, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, Josh. It's almost like when WCW in like its dying days, you had you had people taken out of power for Warner Warner Brothers and all of them. Mm-hmm. Warner Brothers Discovery. Yeah, yeah. Um, Time Warner, that's what it was at the time. Time Warner, you had the people taken out of power who know wrestling, who were backing it and everything, and you have people brought into power who know nothing about wrestling, could care less about it, and they're like, ah, let's just can it. They also brought in Vince Russo. Yeah, well, yeah they also <laughs> brought in Vince Russo, but TNA did bring in Vince Russo, and they still survived. Somehow. So, listen, they, <laughs> they, they can't... They, it, their first pay per view back as as under the TNA banner was hard to kill, and then Anthem was like, "Hold my beer." <laughs> <laughs> like, We're going to kill it this time. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to inject it with a poison. <laughs> And that poison is not knowing what we're doing. Here comes the main event off, off you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but that, like, I just, I do not, for the life of me, understand. I, it's, just, it's, these are decisions that are being made by people who are way more important than myself, who make way more money than myself. And maybe I don't understand the logistics of it, and I'm only looking at it from the from the point of view as a wrestling fan, which is the only. Uh, angle I can look at this from, I I think it's 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 a very boneheaded decision, and I stand by yeah. that. Yeah. And you're just going to keep making your you're going to keep making your your uh, your roster mad. Yeah. Like you're going to uh, like Jordan WWE has already sort of shown interest in Jordan Grace. Mm-hmm. Like they gave her praise for her for what she was able to do in the Royal Rumble. They gave her some good time in the Royal Rumble too. They, they did. Yeah. They you know. And, you know, in, in Triple H, Triple H, the one thing about, the one thing you could say about Triple H versus Vince, Vince currently, outside of a lot of things, <laughs> is Vince for probably the fat past 10 years has not really had his, really you could probably say 20 years, has not had his finger on the pulse of the world of professional wrestling. Yeah, He, you know, was, a, he, he didn't care. In a way, like well, he was in his little um, bubble, and that was it. Yeah, uh, on the Pat McAfee show that he was on, he said he doesn't really watch anything else. So <laughs> he may not; have, he probably didn't have the time. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he's got more time now. Yeah. Um, but it seems like Triple H is more, more versed. Yeah. Outside of the WWE bubble, like he knows what mm-hmm. to look for and what not to look for, and, and Jordan Grace seems like she ticks all of those boxes. Yeah. For for Triple H's WWE. So what's to say that she does, you know, once her contract's up, WWE doesn't try to sweep in there. Same for Josh Alexander. Josh Alexander is another one that kind of ticks all those boxes. And not just that, but what, even though they got sort of a bloated roster at the moment, what if AEW tries to step in? Yeah. And it's like, you know, <laughs> hey, we're going we're gonna to have, they already got Deanna Perrazzo. Yeah. 
you know, and, and maybe Sasha Banks, Mercedes Monet. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll see that. That's you know March. <laughs> that's March thirteenth, correct? I I think. I think Let something me, like that. A couple weeks or so. I'm checking the calendar. Yeah. 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 March thirteenth. That's on a Wednesday. Big it's, business. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. In Boston. And I think that they're going to have Kazuchika Okada as well. I just I just have a feeling. Um, and we'll talk about that more in the uh, next segment. But yeah. Um. TNA, I don't know what I don't know what to tell you. You really should if I if, if you're smart, I and, and long term looking at this, you need to bring Scott Demore back. You need to bring him back into the fold. Yeah. Again, I am not the one that's booking a multi million dollar wrestling company. I you know, I'm just a dude on the podcast talking with a friend of his who is also a wrestling fan. That's all I do. But long term wise, I would probably bring him back in because this could have a sort of a chilling effect through the entire roster. Yeah. So, and if some, if, if a few people are already showing that they're displeased, it's just going to keep going. Yeah. It's just going to spread throughout the locker room. So just saying that. Anywho, that's going to end the sec, the first segment there. When we come back, we're going to talk about the wrestling observer newsletters, year end awards, some new Japan stuff, elimination chamber, and etc. What? Nothing. What? <laughs> I don't know what he just did. Anywho, stay tuned. It's time for more of the grill out. Here's Hollywood Jeff Petty. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Man, where's Jason? He okay. Jason is at an undisclosed location at the moment. Out of country. Yeah, he wouldn't tell that's, us. That's he a wouldn't shoot. <laughs> he would that, that is a bit of a shoot, but he would not he would not tell us anything. So he may for all we know, Jason is at his home on his on his couch watching <laughs> watching something on television. He's down in the Congos. Yeah. Him, <laughs> him and the baddie. <laughs> I think him and the bat ear are off somewhere. Yeah. It's hard to tell. But. Some cookies. Yeah. Try, no, that's what they're doing. They're out They're out in the Congo right now trying to figure out if cookies actually exist. Yeah. Like, I, I still don't fully understand, <laughs> but that's me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Jason, we, we don't know. We, we love you. We love you, but we, yeah, he's at an undisclosed location. And uh, I'll, ha- I'll be honest, I'm kind of okay that I'm not getting verbally abused by him on the air. <laughs> that's what I said last week, too. I'm like, eh. We'll, we'll be able to stay on track a little better. Sorry, Jason. <laughs> first story. <laughs> first story for this uh, next segment. Uh, the Briscoe brothers will be inducted into the Indie Wrestling Hall of Fame in the class of 2024. This is coming from Fightful.com. Quote, GCW and Orange Crush announced that the Briscoe brothers, Mark and Jay Briscoe, will be inducted into the Indie Hall of Fame class of 2024. The Briscoes are the most decorated tag team in independent wrestling history, holding tag titles in CZW, GCW, HOG, FIP, and more. ABC. Yeah. <laughs> they are the most decorated tag team in Ring of Honor history, winning the Ring of Honor tag team titles a record 13 times. Side note, the Indie Wrestling Hall of Fame will be April 7th at noon in Philadelphia. Also, Trent Acid has been announced as well to the class of 2024. You know what else is happening WrestleMania weekend mm-hmm. on during the time of WrestleMania Saturday? What's up? AEW Collision. They're going to get destroyed. Uh, yeah. Why? <laughs> yeah. Where? D- I d- think it's a pre tape show, but still. Oh, yeah. There's no way. <laughs> yeah. Like, and, yeah. It's, it, that, that's not, that's not smart. No. <laughs> that's not, that's not, yeah. That's not smart at all. But, yeah. So, but good thing is, yes, the Briscoes are going to get inducted into the indie. Yeah. Hall of Fame, which rightfully so. Is that Orange Crush, like the the drink? I guess. I don't <laughs> know. It, that was just what I pulled off of Fightful.com. Um, and also, weren't they, they were Ring of Honor champions when uh, when it, Jay passed away, right? Yeah, yeah, they were, yeah. Yeah, okay, that's what I, that's what I thought. Because for a while there, uh, Mark was holding both. Yeah, yeah, that's true. He was, he in, in honor of, of Jay mm-hmm. and all of that. Um, but yeah, I mean, rightfully so. They they are de- easily one of the most decorated tag teams in the history of professional wrestling. Easily, um, and and I didn't say the most decorated tag team. One of the most decorated tag teams. I don't have the numbers in front of me of how many times they've won titles across all the promotions, um, but there's a lot. Yeah, a lot. 
So, moving on from that, talking about Mark and NJ and, and all of that, a uh, sort of a sister company now to Ring of Honor, AEW. Oh, it is. They, they t- I mean, they basically own ROH. <laughs> yeah, like they're they're connected now. Yeah, you know, it, yeah. Um, this is coming from PW Insider. AEW, the quote, AEW will 100% be returning to Arthur Ashe Stadium this year. But the talk is that it will be a pay-per-view event, not a TV taping. That would make it the first AEW pay-per-view in NYC proper. World's End was held in Long Island, New York, right outside of New York City. Uh, the plan as early as last year's Grand Slam event in 2023 was that Ash would potentially hold a pay-per-view in 2024. So it appears that will remain the case, end quote. And it's also rumored that it will be Forbidden Door. Three. Yeah, so Forbidden Door 3 will be at Arthur Ashe Stadium. Listen, I didn't know too much about Arthur Ashe Stadium until AEW started running there. Yeah. I love the 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 way the vibe of that entire it is stadium. A nice stadium yeah. It is. It's a very nice stadium. And I, I I'm a little surprised that people didn't run wrestling shows there before. I guess because it's a tennis stadium instead of like a football stadium or yeah. basketball. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, yeah, I can see that. But I don't know. They just it's it it is a it's a very nice venue yeah. from what I've seen and, and just you know, it just I don't know, just the vibe of it there. Yeah. It's very nice. So the, the other rumor is that if Forbidden Doors at uh, at Arthur Ashton Grand Slam's gonna be at the Louis Armstrong Stadium, which is like on the same complex as Arthur Ashe. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It yeah, they're they're all, I think they're all connected. So yeah, and Louis Armstrong is another tennis stadium. Oh, okay. Tony Khan's just like, yeah, you know what? I'm just going to start <laughs> booking all these tennis stadiums. Yeah. I mean, I've got to say, like, as far as re- like wrestling venues go, I mean, Arthur Ashe has got to be probably in my top fifteen or top ten. Hmm. I mean, that's up there with like Hammerstein Ballroom yeah. and, and them, Madison Square Garden, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so you know, I, I think that's I think that's really cool. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, if they do that there, it's just, I don't know if you, if you've never, I'll say this, if you're listening to this and you've never watched an AEW show, like, like Grand Slam from Arthur Ashe, go, go do yourself a favor. It's just, I just think it's a really cool venue, especially yeah. with the way they set it up. So, um, that, yeah, that's a rumor that, uh, where AEW's, um, uh, next pay-per-view, well, potential pay-per-view this year is going to be, um, just to tie up some, uh, loose ends, uh, New Japan wise, Tama Tonga finished up his last appearance for New Japan. Actually, technically this this morning, we're recording this on Saturday, but yeah. technically this morning, yesterday morning, a couple days ago, depending on when you're listening to this, uh, meaning there are no original Bullet Club members on the active roster anymore for New Japan, huh. which is a little crazy. Yeah, um, but yeah, no original members are left. Also, Kazuchika Okada finished up his last appearance for the promotion as well, and Naito retained his World Heavyweight title. That was on night two. Um, other notable things, uh, which were mainly on night one, uh, Nick Nemeth, Dolph Ziggler, yeah, formerly known as Dolph <laughs> Ziggler. Defeated David Finley for the IWGP Global Championship, and Matt Riddle defeated Hiroshi Tanahashi for the NJPW World Television Title. And that was on night one. When I read that Nick Nimeth won the title, I was like, he won the world title. I was like, oh wait, no, that's that's the uh, that's their new mid card title. It's just called Global, even though it's the same thing as World. The, so weird. Just bring back <laughs> the Intercontinental Title. Yeah. Why did you have? Why? Why did you have to get rid of the U.S. Title? Yeah. Why did you have to get rid of the Intercontinental title? Yeah, U.S. title was like only a few years old, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> like, it, 2016? Yeah. So it was, what, it was, it was several, I mean, it was like seven years old, yeah. seven or eight years old now, but still. I thought, it, and, it, and it's a, it was a beautiful belt. Like, yeah. You, you could have repaired that, come on. And, and I, I think I was looking up, just like they did with the old heavyweight championship, they completely retired the U.S. title. And this is a new title. Yeah, <laughs> this may just be may just be how how Japanese promotions book their stuff. I think this is just this is just a cultural different thing with them over there versus us. How we would do it, you know, it's just it's it's just a little different. That's yeah. uh, it's just a culture thing. I really think that's what it comes down to. Um, but you know, Kazusuke Okada, there has been rumors that he is going to AEW. Um, we mentioned it a little bit in the previous segment with um, Big Business, AEW Big Business, which will take place from Boston on March 13th, which is the alleged rumored, okay, which is the rumored debut for Mercedes Monet, formerly known as 
Sasha Banks. And I also just personally, I think Kazuchika Okada is going to kind of fit right in there. Um, there's been rumors that Tama Tonga will be going to the WWE. Hmm. So, there, I mean, there's a possibility. He may go to AEW. He may go to uh, TNA. I wouldn't recommend it at the moment. Um, is, there hasn't been any anything confirmed, but... Tama Tonga is not part of the NOI, is he? I remember no. seeing a list. Okay, I can't, no. I can't remember if he was on he, the list. <laughs> he is... Um, he is the adoptive son of Haku. Mm. Um, Tungaloa, who is his uh, brother, uh, that he is the blood son of Haku. Mm. And uh, Hikaleo also. So, yeah, that, like Haku, that scary person. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that... that they are this, they they are his kids, so mm-hmm. they don't they don't have any ties to the Anawahi, though. <laughs> even though it seems like they do. Yeah, yeah they, no, no, they they do not. Um, so just to uh, speaking of like just pr- different promotions and whatnot, Wrestling Observer Newsletter has come out with their year end awards. I'm not going to sit here and give you every single one of them. I'm just going to kind of hit the highlights of a few of them. Um, their Wrestler of the Year. Is Will Osprey, which rightfully so. I don't think Osprey has had a bad match at all in 2023. I mean, it was all kicked off by, and just segue to the next thing, to the what was voted as the best match of the year. Um, the well, yeah, it was voted match of the year. Will Osprey versus Kenny Omega at WrestleMania, Wrestle, WrestleMania, Wrestle Kingdom 17. Um, like I said, just January 4th, 2023. That's how his year kicked off. Um, Booker of the Year. It's not Tony Khan. Yeah, it's Triple H. Yeah, rightfully so. I mean, you know, we've talked about on the program. Tony Khan has, you know, and AEW has kind of puttered off a little bit. You know, they've lost a lot of steam. A- WWE is white hot at the moment, so it makes sense. Which also leads to the next thing: Promoter of the Year, Nick Khan. Yeah, I didn't realize he was considered a promoter. I, mean, I guess he is technically, but just. What? <laughs> I, yeah, when it when it was presented, yeah, I kind of had uh-huh. sort of the same reaction to it, but in a way, yeah, he he is a promoter for mm. for WWE. So um, one con won something, <laughs> but it wasn't Tony. It was yeah. Nick. Tag team of the year, back to back winners, FTR. Rightfully so. I mean, I, I don't really have much of an argument there for that one. I don't know. I don't know what other tag team could have won tag team of the year. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, promotion of the year, obviously WWE. But interesting enough, best weekly TV show, AEW Dynamite. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. Yeah, I, that one. That one caught me off a little bit. Yeah. I was like, okay, you got promotion of the year WWE, but I think these are these these ones are actually voted on by fans. Yeah. So, because like. Best gimmick went to Timeless Tony Storm. And she was also on the list of worst gimmicks? Yeah. Which, she was ranked number three in worst gimmicks. I was confused. And I was like, are they talking about Tony Storm pre Timeless or to Tony Storm Timeless? Because they may have been talking like, in like September, October. Yeah. I was going to say, I think they may have been talking about, talking about like Outcast yeah. Tony Storm, which is understandable. I yeah. mean, Outcast, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. They were kind of lame. Yeah. But timeless Tony Storm, no, she's amazing. <laughs> oh yeah, she is just awesome. And yeah. then the little the production stuff that they're doing mm. with the with the black and white, like yeah. the other night where they had Diana Perazzo come out and they had it had it split right down the middle on the yeah. screen. Like Tony's side was black and white. And then when she walked, then when Diana walked away and Tony took full frame, they turned it completely black and white. Like I just I think it's. I don't cool. know if the production technology is there. It'd be pretty cool if they could do it where. Only Tony's black and white. Yeah, <laughs> like that would just that would just be perfect. Maybe do that in the matches, but yeah. I feel like that would be that would be way too much too much producing to do yeah. at that point. It'd be an, it's an, it's an interesting idea, but yeah, timeless Tony Storm. I, I that she has knocked it out of the park. Yeah, with that gimmick. Um, but yeah, I, I already said match of the year: Will Ospreay versus Kenny Omega, Wrestle Kingdom seventeen, the U.S. slash Canada MVP. Cody Rhodes. Why did you say North America? Or is yeah. Mexican, Mexico is a separate category? Se- Mexico is a separate one. I okay. didn't. I don't have it wrote down, but yeah, Mexico is a separate mm. MVP. I don't know why they combined Canada and the U.S. Maybe because you know Canada doesn't have as many wrestling promotions as they used to. What what Canadian promotions are there? I, I don't know. Yeah. I remember Stampede. <laughs> that was about it. That was yeah. the only one I can really think of. I, I'm, there's other ones. They did have like there was one that I can't. I don't know what the promotion's name was, but they did the Tour of Death. Mm. Up in like the 
like very northern part mm. of Canada. Like I remember Kenny Omega talking about that. Him, I, I, him, uh, Lance Storm, Chris Jericho, and them did those same tours. And the reason why they called them the the, the death tours, quote unquote, is because like in order for that, they had to go to like this reservation. Okay, and in order to get to that reservation, they all had to load up in vans and drive across this sketchy ice because you can only <laughs> get there by a vehicle like uh-huh. a few times out of the year, and that's when it's like frigidly cold. Mm. And apparently, there's been a couple times like people have been on these, these death tours, and like the ice has broke and the vehicle. Mm. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> you can't. No, no, mm. uh-uh. you ain't paying me to do that. Uh-huh. Um, women's MVP Rhea Ripley. Worst television show, NWA Power. Yeah. I mean, I haven't really watched it, but I mean, you had Tyrus <laughs> as your champion, so <laughs> can we consider it a television show if it's on streaming? Ah, uh, that's true. It was on YouTube technically this last year. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could <laughs> say just worst show. Yeah, maybe because maybe okay, Dave. If you're listening, it's Dave Meltzer. If you're listening to this, you probably should update some of this stuff because, like, it, yeah. It's not a television show, but I guess people still voted for it. And worst, worst weekly show, maybe better worded. Yeah, because you well, you had best weekly tel- TV show. So I guess yeah, I guess you could just drop TV altogether. Mm-hmm. Worst weekly show, um, worst promotion of the year. Shocker, shocker! It's NWA. Yeah, um, and TNA ain't gonna be too far behind it at the rate <laughs> that they're going. <laughs> so just uh, just just throwing that one out there. But yeah, that's your Wrestling Observer newsletter year end awards you know i know this is february we're going into march now but this is you know they get the voting done they put everything together and then they do the little presentation with it which honestly that makes the most sense to me because i always find it weird when they do these year end awards like in late november early december it's like you still have a year some left yeah you still got like a month or two left (laughs) i mean yeah that's better and that's also like it's like with with pwi and their their top five uh, pwi 500 like it's mm-hmm. like, yeah, we take in half a year and then another half year into consideration, and that's it. Yeah, and it's like, wait, that that's just really confusing. It is weird. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's confusing. I'm not that smart to begin with, but eh, you're making that kind of confusing on me. So just to round out this uh th- this segment, we're gonna talk a little bit about elimination chamber. If real, you stayed did, uh, real quick, did you stay up and watch it? I did. Okay, it was my normal time basically. Yeah. Before we get into that, I wanted to interject about Tomatonga. Tomatonga, um, he is considered NOI. At least oh, really? considered related. Oh, he's not blood related, but it's kind of like how The Rock is almost. He's not blood related, but he's considered part of it. Has some affiliation to yeah, it. Yeah, Peter Maivia helped train his father Haku, so they have a bond there. And so, oh. <laughs> Man, the Anawahi family tree just keeps getting bigger and yeah. bigger. Well, that makes sense because didn't at the press conference didn't they have Haku up there? I, I think I don't know. There's a lot up there. Yeah, they did. <laughs> they had Danny Garcia, not that Danny Garcia, <laughs> <laughs> not Daniel Garcia, but they had a Danny Garcia. Yeah, which I think is honestly like the Rock. Is, is, I think that might be the Rock's ex wife yeah, or something. Yeah, the mother of Ava. Yeah, yeah. So she was she was up there. Um, that just popped in my head. Okay, yeah. yeah. So Tomatonga is uh, considered an Anawahi. That family tree just keeps going and going and going. Anyway, WrestleMania, Elimination Chamber. Elimination Chamber was over. Uh, let me ask you this, Josh. Okay, that was was that your first like wrestling show watching that early in the morning? The like, uh, like live, at least live. Yeah, yeah, like live show. Like you know, this is this is not a replay. You're yeah. not going. You, you're not like avoiding. Uh, social media for potential yeah. spoilers. Like, <laughs> so what? What was your what was your impressions of it? Um, super predictable show. Not that that's a bad thing. Because mm-hmm. I mean, we're about to get in. We tied on it. That's how predictable it was. <laughs> yeah, I'm still your champion. <laughs> yeah. Um, I admittedly didn't pay a whole lot of attention to a few of the matches. I watched the entire main event. Nia Jax's best match. Granted, she had Rhea Ripley there, but <laughs> she had a good dance partner. Yeah, I think that was the first women's main event for a PLE and. At least like a couple or so years. Yeah, I can't. I, the last one I I remember was it WrestleMania thirty five. That was twenty nineteen. Uh, it's five years ago. I think that Survivor Series that they might have done main event was that the one before. Yeah, that Survivor Series they had the triple threat with the women's champions. Ah, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, and it makes sense that they had a Rhea Ripley in yeah. the in the main event. I mean, they are in her home country. Yeah. So, um, 
Yeah. Uh, Cody did call out The Rock. Mm-hmm. Said anytime, any place. So we're going to we'll see some more development on that. It seems like Cody's like, hey, yeah, I'm going to take on your cousin. But hey, if you're if old Rocky wants to come up here and talk yeah. to me, he can. <laughs> it looks like that tag match is more than likely going to happen because Seth's like, hey, I got your back on this. Yeah, they're kind of kind of teeing it up for mm-hmm. that. Um, and speaking of the tag matches, did it? I, I didn't. I didn't watch. I was not up that early. I have I have work. <laughs> um, that, but like, did it seem like like Finn Balor's? Foot, like something happened to his thumb. I I, I didn't really see. Okay, I, I just saw some people online talking like, "Hey, it looked like something may have happened mm-hmm. to his thumb." So I will say, out of all the four matches, well, five if you can go to pre-show that randomly got added. Um, we, we had no idea. Yeah, that got added like two days ago. So, but um, that tag match was the only one that seemed like it could maybe go the other way. Which Jason guessed the other team, but obviously they didn't win. But yeah. Imagine, new catch republic. Imagine if if he did get that right, we would not hear the end of it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he would he would call from his undisclosed location and be like, "Listen, I am your <laughs> champion. Have it waiting for me at my house." <laughs> I, I can see that, but yeah, yeah. Uh, Josh and I did tie. And nobody, none of us got the bonus. No, Jason was the closest on the bonus. Yeah, crazy enough. <laughs> Because our pick wasn't even in there. Yeah, well, that was the rumored. Yeah, uh, yeah, we were just kind of going off of rumors on that one. I need one. to stop doing that now. Cause... Yeah, <laughs> we especially around this time of year because they do put out false information because it, of WrestleMania. That and just because, um, where what was it? WWE is almost intentionally feeding false rumors now, as I'm, opposed to like when Vince was there. <laughs> not true, <laughs> but it's like it's. I, and this is just something that I've heard. Wrestle Talk talk about several times, but like especially around this time of year, they have a tendency to put out false information because they don't want nothing spoiled. Yeah. So I mean that that makes sense. I was gonna say Jason's close on with Shane and Baszler. She was winning the final three of the Battle Royal. <laughs> Again, if he would have won, yeah. we would not. But technically, if he would have won that, he would have what tied with us. Yeah. Yeah. So he, you know, <laughs> we would have been. He would have had to get New Catch Republic and yeah. Shayna Baszler in order to win. So it would have been a three-way tie. But because of the tie, I am still your world heavyweight predictions champion. Yeah. Yes, I am. <laughs> I went with the safe options. Yeah. Uh, I, I wanted to get at least one defense. <laughs> <laughs> Basically did like, did a did, did a uh, count out is what I did. I just powdered out of there and just grabbed my title and went home, and the referee counted until 10. You're welcome. Yeah. Also, uh, Drew McIntyre won the Elimination mm-hmm. Chamber, the Men's Elimination Chamber, so he will take on Seth Rollins at WrestleMania 40. Yeah, um, that does remind me. My initial thought for the United States title, I don't think it's happening anymore. The way the Elimination Chamber match set up some matches, it looks like LA Knight and AJ Styles is going to be at WrestleMania, and then it looks like Logan Paul and Randy Orton, U.S. title WrestleMania. Oh. So did, did you? Oh, you didn't see it. I, I, didn't, I, did not, I have not had a okay. chance to see it. Do you? You want me to tell you what happened? Go for it. I don't... Uh, so ran... <laughs> a rather funny moment. Uh, so uh, Logan Paul got his brass knuckles. He's getting ready to use them. RKO out of nowhere. He gets eliminated. Uh, so it's just Drew and Mac and Drew and Randy left. Uh, Drew is about to do the Claymore and Randy. He's down. Uh, Randy comes back up to do an RKO on Drew, but then Logan Paul appears, punches him with the brass knuckles, which allows Drew to win. Oh, so, yeah. Hmm. So, yeah, it looks like that's going to be Logan and Randy at WrestleMania. All right. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, also, Becky. Oh, I, I should say AJ Styles entered in the chamber, and that's what calls LA Knight's elimination. Oh, okay. So he attacked him with a chair. No, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. And uh, Becky Lynch, she won the women's. So she's she- going to t- face Rhea Ripley at WrestleMania 40. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. That all happened on uh, Elimination Chamber. Apparently it was a it it was a very interesting uh, setting because of the sunset and everything. That was cool, yeah, yeah. Like I've, I've, I saw a lot of people complimenting that. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, WWE is they 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 are definitely like they've already got a few others scheduled for this year. They're definitely going to be doing way more international mm-hmm. shows. So for those of you that um that made fun of everybody who stayed up to watch New Japan. <laughs> and want to run your mouth to people in you in the UK for staying up as late as they do to watch wrestling. Get ready, buckle up, buckaroos, because <laughs> it ain't stopping. Well, the next ones I believe will be like around noontime our time instead of like five a.m. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which it, like uh, you got backlash coming in France, 
Yeah. Um, but, the, there's a Germany show in August, Bash in Berlin. Yeah. Uh, uh, Money in the Bank is going to be in Canada, so that's just normal time. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we say international, but yeah. I mean, they do <laughs> they do tour in Canada quite often. Uh, I think that's it for right now that they've been announced. Okay. Outside of the country, anyways. But if if we if we hear any more, we will yeah. we will let you know. But that's going to end the segment there. When we return on this day in wrestling history and the main event. Stay tuned. Lord. Once again, here's Hollywood Jeff Petty. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the third and final segment of the Grill Out. I am your host, Hollywood Jeff Petty. Jeff Petty, J E W F P E W T Y. I don't know why I keep doing the Jeff Jarrett thing. And <laughs> we also have uh, Josh Colt, baby. Wow. The belt expert, belt collector, our belt expert and belt collector. Showed his expertise in the uh, in the first first segment of the show. So, yeah. you know, thankfully we have him I'm bringing back the grill up. People don't understand what the Grand Slam is. I'm done. The- <laughs> <laughs> He's got some pet peeves with people. <laughs> no, okay, briefly, there are people online who think Grand Slam means every single championship. At least in WWE, no. It means the one world championship, both mid-cards, one tag team. And a Triple Crown is just world mid- mid-card tag team. Triple Crown is more strict. It's really? the WWE title specifically, the Intercontinental title, and what is currently considered the Raw tag team title. Huh. Why is it so strict on that one? I don't know. <laughs> I was say, that, that's they, for some reason, they just never, I guess, updated to allow another world title or the U.S. title to be in place of those. But yeah, yeah, it, it, that also just seems kind of like it snubs the other world title oh, and the those, U.S. title. Those, uh, Braun Strowman, if the Universal title was allowed, Braun Strowman be a Triple Crown, but he's not. That's yeah. that's strange. But then again, that's <laughs> Kevin why to the... be a Triple Crown, but he's not. Who is Kevin Owens? He'd be a Triple Crown, but he's not. He's Grand Slam, but not a Triple Crown. That makes absolutely no <laughs> sense. <laughs> yeah. Ah, you heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen, because I am too. I'm a little perplexed on this one. Um, Finn, ba- Finn Bauer's a triple crown, or grand slam, but not triple crown. That makes zero sense. Yeah. Why does it have to be the WWE title, the the Intercontinental title, and specifically the Raw Tag Team title? For the Raw, just to clarify, that's because it used to be the WWE Tag Team title. Mm-hmm. But that's, yeah, anyways. <laughs> Oh my lord, that 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 hurt my brain a little bit. That hurt my brain so much that we're just going to go to uh, on this day in wrestling history. On this day, on this day in wrestling history, Finn Balor's not a triple crown. He's not. <laughs> That blew my mind. Him and Kevin Owens. Yeah. Uh, oh man, that's that hurts my head a little bit. AJ Styles is, though, so hey, who's that? Hey, yeah, well, you know what? At least they got one right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Makes no sense. Um, anywho. Baby. AJ Styles has been WWE for eight years. Don't say that. Don't. His no. run is like, yeah. Don't. He's, he's had more matches in WWE now than he's had in TNA. <laughs> just don't. No, stop. <laughs> just stop right where you're at. Oh, January. January. You got me messed up. February 25th, 1990. I wasn't even born yet. Yeah, we're going way back. <laughs> WCW and NWA presented Wrestle War 90, Wild Thing, from the Greensboro Coliseum in Greensboro, North Carolina. In the main event, Ric Flair defeated Lex Luger by countout to retain the w- the WWE, the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship. So there you go, wrestling historians. Greensboro is about to get another event. They, next they week. are. They are. It's going, going to be Sting's last, last match. Yeah. So. February 25th, 1995, about a, less than a month before I was born, ACW Return of the Funker took place at the ECW Arena in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Naturally based on the title of the show, Terry Funk made his return after the main event with a surprise attack on Tommy Dreamer and Cactus Jack. The show saw, name redacted, Chris <laughs> Benoit and Dean Malenko defeat Sabu and the Taz Mani- Maniac, a.k.a. Taz, to win the ECW World Tag Team Championship. Here comes Jason. Why well, say name redacted if you just say the name? <laughs> I just say it. It's it's part of the bit. Yeah. 
got it. Got to put the bit in there. <laughs> February twenty fifth, two thousand one. WWF No Way Out took place at the Thomas and Mack Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. The show featured a double main event, the first part of which saw Triple H defeat Stone Cold Steve Austin. What? Two to one. What? In a three stages of hell match. Yeah. In the final match of the night, The Rock, I, I teed it up there for you. <laughs> the, Rock, <laughs> the Rock became the first ever six time. WWF champion with a win over Kurt Angle. Yeah. Never knew that. I never knew he was the first six-time WWF champion. That was a, that's a little interesting fact. I never knew that. Yeah. So there you go. That is on this day in wrestling history. If there's anything that we don't cover on this segment, you can let us know. The Grail at 95 at gmail.com, or you can message us on the Facebook page. Um, lastly, the main event, which is just us giving you a heads up on what your week of professional wrestling looks like. Monday is Raw. Tuesday is NXT and NWA Power. Power on yep. the CW app. Yep, it's on the CW TV app. Wednesday will be Dynamite. Thursday will be Ring of Honor and TNA. Friday, Rampage and SmackDown. Reverse order, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Saturday will be Collision. And obviously next Sunday will be Revolution. Yeah. So Sting's last match. Mm-hmm. And and speaking of AEW pay-per-views, I'm going to throw this out there real quick. I've, I've commented on that one thing that you commented on on Facebook. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> about the supposed... we Okay, so the first time AEW came to town, which was the fifth episode of Dynamite, mm-hmm. okay? It Halloween was a special, too. What is it? <laughs> it was a Halloween episode, too. It was a Rick and Morty special, yeah. which I've seen some people comment. They're like, ah, that was just like a fever dream for me. <laughs> Which, I get it. I was in attendance and it's still kind of a fever dream. Um, yeah, but we both were in attendance, yeah. right? Yeah. It's, wrestling comes to town, we show up um, if we have a chance. So, there was a little promise to us after the show by Matthew and Nicholas Jackson. I think Kenny was there, too. And yeah, they, I don't know. Kenny was there, but it was mainly Matt yeah. and Nick that were talking. Yeah. Um, and they said that, you know, we, we're going to we're gonna bring, we promised to bring a pay-per-view here. Specifically, some fan had a sign with, like, a hole in it. He's like, okay, if I make this shirt or whatever through the hole, we'll bring a pay-per-view. He missed the first time, but got it the second time. He's like, all right, we're doing it. Yeah, come on. <laughs> do it. And on top of that. I think that was on BTE, too. Yes, it was. It was. <laughs> I, uh, I went frame by frame until I saw my brother and I. <laughs> So I technically was on BT. That is my claim to fame. (laughs) Oh, I hit that thing. Um, Yeah, that's my claim to fame. And on top of that, if we can't, I understand if we can have a pay per view. I get it. All right, we can handle it. Just we we can (laughs) we can okay. Um, Bring a pay per view to us. And TK, I know, I know, man, I know we we give you a hard time on this program. I realize (laughs) that. We try not to. We try to try to poke some fun. You know, maybe if you want an interview, you can call in. Yeah, we'll 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 set you up one. We'll we'll book it. Bring Collision here. Yeah, please. And we've had Dynamite. We saw the first ever tag team champions crowned here. Yes, we've f- had Dynamite and Rampage double show, and technically Dark and Elevation, but those don't exist anymore. Yeah, they're kind Can of make his return on that one. Yep, yeah. we, yep. I lost. I completely marked that for that. <laughs> I was so obnoxious. In the, yeah, in the in the my, by my seat with that one. So, yeah, TK, if you're listening to this, you're probably not. But if somebody is listening to this and you know Tony Khan, send it to him. Please give us Collision. Yeah. Come on. Shoot. Do the do the double show of Collision and Battle of the Belts. We'll take yeah. It. <laughs> Come on. Charleston, West Virginia is an, is, is an old wrestling town anyway. It's an yeah. old NWA town. I mean, come on. This is a Crockett area. Like, you know, please. Yeah. Let's start. Anybody that's listening to this, let's start a movement. Let's just start a movement of bring Collision to West Virginia. Bring an AEW pay per view to West Virginia. Yeah, and I don't know if this will even have any influence, but hey, let's let's push for it. <laughs> so, so, yep. And we, we have to sell out the arena because it didn't sell out when we had it sold out. Yes, come on, <laughs> I come was on. There, I know. We were, both times. Yeah. No, no. I mean, I was there at the WCW and WWE sold out pay per view. Oh, oh, I didn't. I didn't even know that. Okay, we're learning new things. We are learning yeah. so new things. Finn Balor's not a Triple Crown champion, and same for. Kevin Owens, but they're Grand Slam champions. I don't know. Anywho, that's going to do it for us, ladies and gentlemen. Ziggler should be a Grand Slam, but he's not because of the format changes. Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) We'll have to get into that later. (laughs) If there's anything you would like for us to cover, anything you you want to talk to us about, you want to tell us that you like the show, that you don't like the show, that you you kind of wish we would have Jason on here more. He doesn't like us. Email 
The grill at 95 at gmail.com. What is it? He's in the Congo. He is. Him and the batty are in the Congo <laughs> trying to figure out if cookies are real. They're trying to find the source of that. Um, we will uh, update you as we get updates ourselves. Go like the Facebook page, The Grill Out. Okay, that's just what it's called, The Grill Out. Um, and if you're listening to this on Spreaker or anything else and you see other podcasts for the WCHS network like Let's Talk with Carl Lee and you know maybe you see Dave at the Dave Allen Show on 580 Live or Hotline and them, go check them out. Go give them some love. Anything else you would like to add, Josh, before we close this out? Cowboy Bob Orton is going to be wrestling at AES, ASW's anniversary show in March. There we go. That's uh, that's what we're going to end it on. Make sure you go there. <laughs> also, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. anyway. That's going to do it for us, ladies and gentlemen. Until next time, fellow wrestling fans, have a good one. And good night back.